Great. Question nine. Find the coordinates of the points where the curve meets the x-axis. So first thing is, if it meets the x-axis, that means when is y equal to zero. So that means we're solving the equation where y is equal to zero. Sine t, sine 2t is equal to zero. <coughs> and we want to solve this equation in the range that we've got, which is the range uh, 0 to pi. Now be careful about this because uh, we've got quite a few people just not putting down all of the answers you could get. This is two things multiplying to give an answer of zero which tells us that either sine t is zero or sine 2t is zero which doesn't feel like it's two equations but we, we need to think carefully about this sine t being zero for t between naught and pi well that does give us two values doesn't it that gives us the values t equals zero and pi this one well, this also gives us another value, because if t is between 0 and pi, 2t is between 0 and 2 pi, and 2 pi is also a solution. So 2t can be those three, and if we divide everything by 2, we get 0, pi by 2, and pi. <coughs> so we've actually ended up with three points. For those three values, we need the x-coordinate. Find the coordinates of the points where it meets the x-axis. So if t equals 0, x is 1 minus cos 0, which equals 0. If t equals pi by 2, x is 1 minus cos pi by 2. Now, cos of pi by 2 is 0, because it's 90 is 0. So that's 1 minus 0 is 1. And if it is pi, x is 1 minus cos of pi. Cos of pi is minus 1, so that's 1 minus minus 1, which gives us 2. So the coordinates of the points were 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0. Again, the question did say, find the coordinates. Um, it did accept x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2. There we are. I think you know what happened, quite a few people missed out which one would be that one didn't be the one zero option because you didn't spot pi by two as being um, one of the solutions. On to part two, which says, show that dy by dt is this expression here, and hence find the coordinates of any stationary points in an exact form. Right. Um, this was, uh, this was a little bit kinder to give you this, and I do think it was one of those ones that's quite hard to tell the detail of it. I think there were one or two people who got almost there and then bluffed the way to the end of this one. But it is one of those ones where it's quite hard to tell just whether you've done that in the end. So we need, to get to over the x, we need dy by dx by dt and dy by dt, don't we? So x is 1 minus cos t. So dx by dt, um, if we differentiate cos, we get, oh, is it plus or minus, sorry. Is that what you're going to say? Cos differentiates to minus sine. How did you remember that? CD music CD system. CD music system. So cos differentiates to minus sine, so that just gives us plus sine t, doesn't it? And y was sine t, sine 2t, uh, that is a product rule. So dy by dt is the first times the derivative of the second, which would be 2 cos 2t, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which would be cos t. Which, which is as it is, we're not going to do anything with that just yet. Um, so dy by the x is that one divided by that one, so dy over dx. So that is 2 sine t cos 2t plus sine 2t cos t. 
over sine t. Um, that is definitely not the answer that we were looking for. The answer that we were looking for had only coses in it, cos 2t and 2 cos 2t. So let's work on that to see what we can do with it. We want it to only have coses in it. Right. Um, the cos 2t is all right, isn't it, actually? If you look at that, the first term is 2 cos 2t. And if we cancel on the sine t there, we've got 2 cos 2t. So that first term is brilliant. That's exactly what we want. The second term is sine 2t. We've already used this identity once. Sorry. Sine 2t is 2 sine t cos t. Now, either at this point um, or later, are we, are we okay with that still? Uh, we, can, we can think about doing some cancelling down of things. Um, what have we got next? We've got 2 sine t cos 2t. Um, this, is, this gives us a, a cos squared. Can we add this? Is that okay? So that is plus 2 sine t cos squared t over sine t. We've got sine t as a common factor top and bottom, so we cancel it out. And that's what we wanted. That's what we were looking for. And then it said, find any stationary points, the coordinates of any stationary points. So we're left with this now. If, um, if we've got a stationary point, that means dy by dx equals zero. And again, you have to actually state that you're dealing with dy by dx being zero. We've got 2 cos 2t two plus 2 cos squared t is zero. Um, we, we need to get this equation into a form that we can solve it. Well, cos 2t, we've got an identity that links that with cos squared, haven't we? The identity says that cos 2a is cos squared a minus sine squared a. We've already used it in this paper. And that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared, so that's 2 cos squared minus 1. So this becomes 2 times 2 cos squared t minus 1, plus 2 cos squared t is 0, giving us 4 cos squared t minus 2, 2 cos squared t is 0, so 6 cos squared t is 2, cos squared t is a third, and so we've got cos t is plus or minus the square root of a third. Um, which is root 3 over 3. Is that right? Yes. So we're left with putting that into the calculator and coming up with values. Do I need to do that now or are we alright with that at this point? Oh, it said, um, what did it say? Oh, it said find the exact values, didn't it? So actually, we don't want to find the t value. We want to put that back into our, uh, our coordinate form, don't we? Would that be better? Um, you, could, you could find out the value from it. We just need to sub it back in, really, don't we? Uh, cos, if cos t is plus or minus root 3 over 3, x is 1 minus the square root of that. Or 1 plus root 3 over 3, that's uh, because x is 1 minus cos t. And then, I don't know, you probably do want to find the, the value of um, t to sub it in to get the y coordinate. But you can do it exactly. Um, it gives you minus 4 over 3 root 3. 
for that one. No, it gives you 4 over 3 root 3 for that one. And minus 4 over 3 root 3 for that one, if we, if we work them that way. Okay, the yeah, only calculator that gives you quite a nice value, doesn't it? If you do inverse cos of uh, root 3 over 3. Oh, I've stolen your calculator. Sign squared plus cos squared is 1 and, and so on the values that way. The last part says, oh no, we stood up two parts together. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve. Give your answer in the form y plus f of x. I think I might have to page with this. So we've got Some people made at this point were doing that classic thing of finding t in terms of inverse cos and trying to use that to work your way through it. <coughs> and that, that's not really a particularly helpful way of going about it. You need to you need to you need to work it out in terms of the sine and cos things. Remember, look what we've got. Um, this bit up here, y equals that we've done this earlier, haven't we? This is sine t times 2 sine t plus t. So this is 2 sine squared t cos t. So it's 2 1 minus cos squared t times cos t. That's what we're going to use because here we've got that cos t is 1 minus x. And so we're going to do that substitution. If cos t is 1 minus x, y is 2 times 1 minus 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x. And that's that's us eliminating t in a nice way from our equation. And um, well we've, we've got it. We, uh, did we, do we need to multiply out at this point? I can't remember whether we need to or not. Oh no, they, that's it. They, um, oh, they did want it multiplied out to an extent. So, we have... There's a few neat things that you can do here, because this is difference of two squares. So you can, you can use that to factorise it straight away. And do that. Did anybody did you think of that? This is, this is 1 take away 1 minus x squared. So it's 1 minus 1 minus x times 1 plus 1 minus x. And that gives you it in fully factorised form quite quickly. Does that make sense? Your other option is just to multiply out the brackets and get 1 minus, 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So you do two lots of uh, 1 minus 1 and then you've got 2x minus x squared times 1 minus x. Is that right? Um, which gives you squared minus 6x. In turn to be minus 6x squared minus 4x. So there we go. Uh, and finally, sketch the curve. Well, we spent a long time on this question, getting all of the details together about it. So we have 
a curve that has roots at 0, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. It has uh, a couple of stationary points. We've got the curve, and it's a positive x cubed curve. So that, that all comes together to tell us much about this. We have a curve that is doing that. There's, there's one final thing happening with this, though, that is really important at the very end of it. That those, that's the cubic curve. There's 0, 0. There's 1, 0. And there's 2, 0. Remember right back at the start, t is between 0 and 2 pi. And we saw those extremes. 0 gave us the point 0, 0. 2 pi, not 2 pi, pi gave us the point 2 at the end. So those points, they are, there. they are the end of t. t starts there, generates values, and stops there. So the bits that you'd normally draw on your cubic curve that go off up here and down here just aren't there. They're not part of this because it's not defined for those values. That's the only bit of the curve that we want. That's quite a mean little bit right at the end of it to, uh, to spot. And it, it, was, it was a shame quite a few of you got nice cubic curves, but just did the full thing showing all of the um, things. So we have to stop at those two. That was a long question. That's, that's math.